You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Jenkins versus Hensley. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Mr. Jenkins, you say your girlfriend is a known cheater who has spent the last two years bouncing between you, her ex-boyfriends, and her co-workers and can't be trusted. You say there is no way you are the father of her daughter, Asher, and this paternity doubt has put your wedding on hold. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Hensley, you admit to making a mistake early on in your relationship, but say you have always believed Mr. Jenkins is your child's father and you intend to prove that today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Jenkins, so why don't you trust your ex fiance I do not trust her because throughout the course of our relationship, I've either caught her cheating or attempting to cheat with other people. And so what has this paternity doubt done to your relationship? It's really put the relationship on a line because I love being with her, but it's making me have more and more doubts as time goes on because I keep finding more and more cases. So it has eroded the trust? Yes, Your Honor. And you don't really have a foundation? No, Your Honor. Because at this point, you don't believe anything she says? No, Your Honor. Which I... is why you basically canceled the wedding? Yes, Your Honor. I've been sleeping on the couch and doing very minimal things to help with the baby and such since I don't believe that it's mine. So you still live together? Yes, we do. Hmm. So that's got to be stressful and awkward. <laughs> so how is it at home, Miss Hensley? Stressful and awkward? Uh, yeah, it is. And I have made mistakes in the past. And I did leave him when we first got together. And I have thought about leaving him, so that's where he's getting where I've cheated on him. So, Mr. Jenkins, specifically, how have you caught Miss Hensley cheating? Uh, there arose one time we, when we were first together for four weeks. Um, I, we worked at the same location, and I happened to text her, and she was going to come over and spend the night. Well, she ended up messaging me saying, hey, I'm staying late until 2 a.m. at midnight is when she was supposed to get off. So I drove by about, say, 1 o'clock, and I noticed the business no. was already closed. Then I realized there's only two vehicles there. There's her car and her ex-boyfriend's truck. So why was he there? Well, he has the times wrong. It was actually during business hours, and it was 11 p.m., and he needed to talk to me about something that was really important, and we were together for a very short time, and so I was having doubts, but no, I did not cheat on him. Nothing happened, and we were in a parking lot, so... Yeah, the I lights were all the way off, and when you came over to stay the night that night, I went through your phone, and you had still been texting him for about two weeks prior. As he if came you had with never the uh, receipts, Miss Hensley. Mr. Jenkins is not playing today. <laughs> so he went through your phone and saw you had been texting him continuously. I mean, that what's probably, your response to that? That probably is true, be that we were talking as friends because I mean, you were speaking like you had never broken up. Well, we what did together. the messages say, Mr. Jenkins? They were speaking about how I miss you and I love you and I wish I could be with you, but I'm busy right now. Wait, and this is when you were engaged or before you were engaged? This is four weeks after we had been together. So you do admit you were still entertaining your ex when you first met Mr. Jenkins? I had just broken up with my ex and met David, so it, that All right. relationship was So over. do you admit you still have feelings for your ex? Oh, no, not to this day, no. But at that time, did you? Uh, yeah, I did. I thought I did. But then when I left him, uh, when I left David for him, uh, I realized shortly that I made a mistake. And after about two weeks, I did go back to David. All right. So you found out Mr. Jenkins is the one I want to be with. Mm -hmm. You came back. You take her back, Mr. Jenkins. Yes. And then you try again. Yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. So what happens from that point on? Well, we got another job. Because it's a kind of a reoccurring issue is that whenever she goes to a job, she ends up becoming friends with some cute guy she met there. But she, we were working at a factory at the time. She had a fellow coworker that would always come over and like fake nudge her, joke with her, flirt with her, talk with her. They would sit together on break with me sitting right there next to him. And I never could trust him. Yet one night I went through and I went through her phone again 
and she was messaging her manager about the co wasn't my manager about the coworker saying he's so cute but yet he knows about David so you submitted your recollection of that text exchange to the court yes your honor it's right there Miss Hensley oh he's so cute but he knows about David with the tear eye yes your honor was there a coworker Miss Hensley that you were interested in yes and we were friends but I made it clear to him that I had a boyfriend and that's why I told him about that because people were trying to get me to leave David because they saw the way that he treated me for the other guy. And he made it clear that he would not ever do anything with me or talk to me like that because I had a boyfriend. Did you ever consider leaving Mr. Jenkins for this other guy? Uh, I mean, yeah, I liked him, but we never got to talking like that at all because he respected my relationship and that I wasn't going to leave him. You don't believe that, Mr. Jenkins? I don't believe it at all. They knew very well that they could see me and they could see me watching them. And yet he would still come over there like clockwork every two hours for a break. Mm, that don't sound good. Actual cases. Her car had come through and slammed me up against the toolbox. There was a torpedo coming at my face. Personal injury court cases everyone's going to be talking about. So, Mr. Jenkins, take me to the day you found out Miss Hensley was pregnant. I found out Shania was pregnant, and I didn't at first believe it because we had been together around two years at the time, and we were having sexual intercourse two to three times a day for the whole two years long. I'm talking, like, all the way through January, all the way through February, all the way through every single month. You actually submitted a calendar to the court that outlines your sexual relationship. <laughs> this is what you say... Yes, Your Honor. ...outlines your sexual activity. As you can see, the caller is coordinated that every single day in January, we had sex every single time, two to three times a day, all the way into February, into April, into... See, as you see there, blue, every single day, we had sexual intercourse two to three times a day. Uh, once again... January, February... March, all of it. March, two, Every three Every day? Every single day. <laughs> two to three times a we day? We were young teenagers, oh, Your Honor. Oh, my God. <laughs> and y'all had jobs? We had jobs, yes. <laughs> she would spend the night at my house a lot, or we moved in together throughout the course of that time at one point. We moved in together after, like, three or four months of being together. Yes, Your Honor. In high school. And these months keep going. March? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. April? April? Every single day. <laughs> May, <laughs> June. <laughs> and that's all. So then... every single day, including weekends, you all would have sex two to three times a day. Yes, Your Honor. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she got pregnant because every single time. Out of nowhere? <laughs> every single time. <laughs> Every single time, Your Honor. He said he done had sex at least 500 times and out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere. Imagine that. The thing I don't understand, Your Honor, is that out of all of those times, every single time was unprotected and precautions were not taken to make sure that we did not have a baby. Your point is we had sex that many times a day for that many months and she never got pregnant. Yes, Your Unprotected Honor. sex. Yes, Your Honor. It wasn't until this time when I suspected she was with someone else that she ends up getting pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. As soon as I started noticing a lot more activity around other men... I have a medical condition, so... Uh, it's hard to get pregnant if you don't ovulate or have a period, so... So you're saying because of a medical condition, you do not ovulate regularly, have your period regularly? Yeah, I didn't have a period the whole time we were together. For two years? Yeah. I never had a period, so... Well, you had to have one before well, my Asher doctor, was doctor conceived. Said that she was uh, pretty much a miracle baby, and I did have issues when I was pregnant with her because I wasn't supposed to get pregnant. And that makes you emotional. I can see that. It means a lot to you that you got to have this baby. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So cute. <laughs> so, Mr. Jenkins... 
Did you immediately have doubt once Ms. Hensley told you she was pregnant? Yes, what were your thoughts? I was very surprised and shocked that she had gotten pregnant because, as I mentioned before, all this time and she never once had gotten pregnant. So all of this made you have significant doubt, Mr. Jenkins. Yes, Your Honor. And that then affected how you felt for the baby. It's all because she broke my trust as soon as we first got together, Your Honor. And so what is your relationship like with Asher? I love her because I was there when she was born and I, I somewhat helped to take care of her, but I, I put very minimal effort into it. Did you sign the birth certificate? Yes, Your Honor. Even though you had doubts? I was in a state of mind where I was very shocked as to what I had just seen because I had never seen a child being born before. <laughs> so, what scared you into signing the birth certificate? I still don't understand why you sign in birth certificates if you have doubt. I was completely frazzled at the time. I didn't know what was going on. Okay. So you decide to sign the birth certificate. What is your relationship like with Asher now? She's I, six months old. I get along with her and she knows who I am, but I don't let her know. I don't call myself daddy in front of her. I want to be 100% sure because I don't want to raise a child that's not mine. I still care for her. I've been with her since she first was conceived. But you admittedly are holding back. Yes. You really aren't giving this child the love and the care that she deserves because you have doubts. Yes, Your Honor. And when you hear that, Ms. Hensley, and you look at your beautiful baby, just six months old, how do you feel? That has to be hard on a new mom. Yeah, it makes me really sad because she calls him Dada and I don't even know where she learned that from. But she re refers to him as Dada, but I've never called him that. Like, she's already starting to talk and everything. She's only six months. Wow. And she calls me mama and she calls him dada. And so it makes me sad when she says that because he doesn't refer to himself as really anything. So, Mr. Jenkins, have you really come to grips with the fact that you may not be Asher's biological father? I mean, it's one thing to say I have doubts, so I'm not going to connect myself to the child and I'm just going to hold back. I see that a lot. It's another thing to get the result and hear for certain you are not a child's biological father. Have you prepared yourself? Yes, Your Honor. You have? I still plan fully to help Shania raise this child because as I said, I love Shania and I am with her. I've just been holding back because I want to know if it's mine or not. But see, that really don't make no sense. You know, I, it, that just doesn't make no sense because when people say that, I'm like, I'm like, okay, that was a beautiful sentiment. But if you're really gonna be there for her regardless of whether or not you're the biological father or not, then why aren't you fully committed and with her now? Mm -hmm. You know, don't tell me what you think I wanna hear. Tell me the truth. I just can't throw away a child's life. I can't be one of those guys that does not care for somebody just because they're not theirs. I get that, but caring for her and taking care of her are two different things. Mm -hmm. And what it sounds like is you're not stepping up right now to really be a true presence in her life because you have the doubts. And if I tell you in a few moments you are not her biological father, I don't believe that you're going to be an ever-present father and protector to this child. Because if you were going to be that, you'd already be that. Just my two cents. I'm just the judge. Jerome, the envelope. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and it reads as follows. In the case of Jenkins versus Hensley, when it comes to six-month-old Asher Jenkins, if you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Jenkins, you are the father. We can all exhale. <laughs> <laughs>
I see that you're happy. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> see, that's when I know the paternity doubts eat away at people, relationships, because I could tell you really love Miss Hensley and I could tell you love the baby. But when you told me you weren't really giving your all to that baby right now, I said, oh, no, it's eating him up. It's been hard, Your Honor. Not being able to care for her, let her know that I am her dad. It's been very hard. And I feel like a very terrible person for not being there for her. You're not alone. Miss Hensley, you have a part to play in this. And you see where all of the burden fell, right? Yeah. This beautiful baby. Yeah, that's true. These are important bonding months. A lot of development happens in the first three years of a child's life. It's supernatural. Mm -hmm. Really, children are the closest thing to God. They're not all messed up and crazy like us. <laughs> it's the truth. And this is a miracle, right? You said it yourself. The doctor said, this is a miracle, baby. So I want to see you appreciate this miracle by turning around your actions and your commitment and the way you approach parenting, all right? I wish you all the very best. Court is adjourned.